DJ Pro's new 5.0 update gave us so many great amazing features and one of them is pretty much a complete redesign of the one deck mode. So let's get into it. So to get to one deck mode, press this middle button here. That is the same as before. But now instead of that strip that we got so used to, we have uh, pretty much a drop down menu that you could scroll down. And I think the other one was easier to switch modes, but this one is easier. I believe they're gonna add more of these modes. So now you could scroll down. So that's how they're gonna fit them all. So we got Starter, Automix, Classic, Pro, and then these four down here, we have Looper and One Deck. So One Deck is what we're going to be talking about. So why would anyone use One Deck mode when DJing is about playing two songs and mixing two songs together? Well, One Deck mode is there so that you can organize your tracks. I say it in all my videos, the most important thing to do as a DJ is organize your playlist and organize your track. And this gives you a bigger view and with the new update gives us some new options to organize our playlist even easier. One of the biggest differences and the first thing I want to talk about is they added these buttons over here. It says auto mix, auto mix, start and stop. What this does is when you set an auto mix and the song comes up, it is going to use the AI technology to decide where to start and stop the song. But if you want to do it yourself and you know a better place where to start and stop the song, which you should if you plan on having the song in your playlist, then you could press the start button. Now, anytime that this song comes on auto mix, as long as you have this setting set, then it is going to start the auto mix at the spot that you wanted it. And then it is going to mix out of the song at the second one here. So if we put that one at the end, I don't know why it's not working, but if you put it where you want the song to end, then anytime that you play that song, it is going to start and stop at wherever you have decided. So I highly recommend that when you're organizing your cue points, which I'll get into in a second, that you should add these start and stop points. So if you have to run to the restroom or something, if you don't use auto mix that much, maybe if you're taking a break or something, you will be prepared and your songs will start at the right time. Auto mix does a really great job at picking where to start and stop, but it doesn't always get it right. And it could kind of, kind of sound clashy or not make sense with the mix from the last song. So definitely utilize these and it's much easier to find. Before this, the only way to get to it was in either classic or pro mode. You had to go here. So there's Nero Mix, and then there's your cue points. Then you had to go all the way over here. It might say slice, skip, or edit grid, but we want skip. Then we get the skip, and now we have our auto mix start and stop. So that was the only way to get to it, which was kind of tricky. It was kind of a hidden feature. But now in one deck mode, it is right there in our face. We could pick where we want to start. And then we could pick where we want to stop. And whenever this comes on in an auto mix, it is going to start and stop at the right spot. So do that to all of your songs when you organize your cue points. Next is a really cool feature, which again was something that was kind of hard to find. And that is your beat skip. So you could choose how many beats you want. So let's just say 32. Yes. So where my song starts. So like this is kind of like an intro part. And it starts kind of the drop part or the or the lyrics start at 32 beats in. So now, if you wanted to do a transition with this song, you know that you could that you are ready to do the transition in 32 beats. So instead of manually counting and manually doing this, if I wanted to set a cue point halfway through this, I could go to 16 beats, go back 16 beats, and then set one of these cue points. So we have access to all eight of the available cue points in the app. And we're going to put a cue point here. Now when the cue point's there, we have an option to go down the drop down menu. We could change the colors, which is awesome. If you have an RGB controller, you will see it on the controller and you can name it. So let's just, for this one, we'll do start. And now every song that you're going to play when you're DJing that are, that's in your DJ playlist should at least have a start and stop cue point. So this one is start, I set my start in green on colorblind, so maybe that's green, maybe it's yellow, but whatever. My start is uh, in green, and then let's just say I'm gonna end the song here. 
my end is going to be in red. So anytime I load up this song on in any mode, so in classic mode, you will see the green here in the beginning. You will see the red at the end, the white, and then the um the kind of two tone one. Those are the start and stop that I told you about. So and then you'll also see it on the big waveform view if you have that screen open. So you don't have to be looking in your headphones. You don't have to be listening in your headphones or looking around. As soon as you load up a track, you know where you're starting or where you're stopping. You don't have to use it, but at least you know that it will work because you tested it before. Never plan on going to a gig and just playing a song that you haven't organized. That's like the biggest secret. These DJs that you see doing the gigs and doing these great mixes, they're not ninjas or superheroes. They're just simply prepared their tracks very well it's the it's the work that you do when nobody's looking that makes the the performance when everyone's looking go well if that makes sense all right so we got our cue points use them use these start and stop points we know how to use our beat skip now we have our loops we could set our loops up here so 16 there is no drop down menu you could just go all the way to 1 and 32 or all the way up to 32 for a loop this is not a save loop. This is just a regular loop. So keep that in mind. You got your loops. We got our standard set and cue and play that we're used to. So we have we have our play, our set, and our cue. And then we have these buttons. This will just do a transition. It'll load up the next track. So you, if you're in one deck mode, you could load up the next track and, and then be playing it that way. So the next track in the playlist is when the beat and then back. So that's all that that does. And now we get one of my favorite things, which is a hidden drop down menu, cue points. So like I said, we were organizing our cue points. That's what these strips are. And then over here, we have loops. So now these loops over here, these are going to be save loops. So if we go back to a different mode, we have that, let's um, eject it. So we could set up to eight loops in the track. And then we have beat grid. A lot of people been wanting to edit the beat grids. So now we can edit the beat grid with everything we have. We can control the BPM. We could half it or double it. If you want to play two songs at the same time, they have to be exactly the same BPM or exactly half or double. So with this way, you could half and double it nice and easy. We can set our downbeat and then we can set our grid and get a really custom view of the grid and really customize our beat grid so that we know exactly what's going on. And then we can reset it there. Go back to cue points. And that's what you can do with one deck mode in DJ Pro. If you want to learn more about the new features in the 5.0 update, check out one of these videos up here. Thank you.